Managing Dental Caries in Preschool Children Managing Tooth Decay in Young Children Today, we're going to talk about a very important topic, managing tooth decay in young children. Tooth decay, also known as dental caries, is a common problem among kids, especially in Western countries like the UK. It's essential to understand why this happens, and how we can and treat it. Prevalence of Dental Caries in Western Countries First, let's talk about how common tooth decay is in Western countries. Studies have shown that many children, even as young as 1.5 to 4.5 years old, can have decayed teeth. In the UK, for example, around 7% of children in this age group already have decay. In some areas, this number can be as high as 50% by the age of 5. Significance and Morbidity Tooth decay isn't just a small problem. It can cause a lot of pain and discomfort for children, and it can lead to serious issues if not treated properly. In fact, treating tooth decay and its consequences is the main reason why some children need to go to the hospital and have general anesthesia. That's how serious it can be. Challenges in managing decay in young children. Now, imagine trying to treat tooth decay in very young children. It's not easy. Dentists face many challenges when it comes to treating tooth decay in preschoolers. But don't worry, we're going to learn about some effective ways to deal with this problem. Conclusion So, in today's session, we'll explore different strategies to manage tooth decay in young children. Understanding why tooth decay happens and learning how to prevent and treat it, we can help keep our little one's smiles healthy and bright. Let's get started. Understanding Early Childhood Caries, ACC A Guide for Parents and Caregivers Definition Early Childhood Caries, or ECC for short, is a dental condition where young children develop cavities or tooth decay in their baby teeth. It's essential to recognize ECC early to prevent further dental problems. Patterns ECC often follows a specific pattern, sometimes referred to as nursing bottle mouth, bottle mouth caries, or nursing caries. This pattern typically affects certain teeth more severely, like the upper front teeth and molars. Surprisingly, the lower front teeth may be less affected. Some children may have extensive tooth decay that doesn't follow this typical pattern, known as rampant caries. It's essential to understand these patterns to provide the right treatment and care for children with ECC. Conclusion Recognizing and understanding ECC is crucial for parents and caregivers. By knowing the signs and patterns of ECC, we can take steps to prevent it and ensure our children have healthy smiles for life. Let's work together to keep our little one's teeth strong and cavity-free. Why lower incisors are spared in nursing caries? Explanation When we talk about nursing caries, which is a specific type of tooth decay in young children, it's interesting to note that the lower front teeth, known as incisors, are often spared. This means they're less affected by decay compared to other teeth. Reasoning this sparing of the lower incisors happens because when babies suckle, their tongue shields the lower teeth from the liquids they consume, like breast milk or formula. Additionally, saliva from glands under the tongue and jaw helps protect these teeth. In contrast, the upper front teeth are more exposed to foods when babies drink from bottles or feeders, making them more susceptible to decay. Factors contributing to early childhood caries, early childhood cavities, ACC, can affect young children and understanding the factors contributing to it is crucial for prevention and treatment. Frequency of sugary drinks One of the most significant factors in ACC is how often children consume sugary drinks. More frequently they drink these beverages, the higher the risk of cavities. Bedtime bottle habits Children with ECC often have a habit of using a bottle, especially at bedtime. This prolonged exposure to sugary liquids can increase the risk of tooth decay. Sleeping with bottles, another risky behavior is falling asleep with a bottle mouth. During sleep, saliva production decreases, allowing sugars from the bottle to linger on the teeth and contribute to cavities. Other contributors, while bottle habits play a significant role, other factors may also contribute to ECC. These include issues like linear enamel defects, malnutrition, and hypomaturation enamel defects on second primary molars. Exploring the link between prolonged breastfeeding and early childhood cavities. 
The Association Between Prolonged Breastfeeding and Early Childhood Cavities, ACC, has been subject to scrutiny, with circumstantial evidence suggesting a potential connection. Understanding this relationship is crucial for promoting oral health in children. Breast milk composition, breast milk, comprising 7% lactose, is a significant component in the diet of infants. Prolonged and frequent breastfeeding, particularly during sleep, may contribute to ECC due to the sugar content in breast milk. Sleeping habits, many affected children have a habit of their parents and breastfeeding during the night, continuing beyond two years of age. These sleeping patterns and prolonged breastfeeding practices may heighten the risk of dental caries development. Timing of breastfeeding While breastfeeding up to around one year of age is generally considered safe for dental health, prolonged on-demand feeding base age may pose a risk for ECC, especially when associated with nighttime feedings. Cow's milk and ECC Animal studies have shown that cow's milk, containing 4% lactose, may not be cariogenic. However, some clinical studies suggest a potential association between nighttime consumption of cow's milk bottle and ECC in certain children. Uncertainty The role of cow's milk in contributing to dental caries remains uncertain and requires further investigation through robust clinical studies and research, identifying preschool children in need of dental care. Importance of early identification Early identification of dental caries is crucial for the success of preventive measures and restorative care. Some parents may mistakenly believe that dental checkups are not necessary until their child is 4 or 5 years old. Role of Community Dental Service Historically, the Community Dental Service, formerly School Dental Service, in the UK provided dental screening in schools. This screening often identified untreated caries in children who had not yet had their first dental checkup. However, regular school screenings have been reduced or in recent years, making early parental awareness more critical, encouraging early dental checkups for children. Importance of early dental care It's important for parents to understand why taking their child for a dental checkup early is so important. As soon as a child's first teeth start to appear, usually between 6 to 12 months old, it's time to schedule that first dental visit. These early checkups are not just about fixing problems, but also about preventing them. Preventive advice. During these early visits, the dentist can provide valuable advice on how to clean the child's teeth properly, recommend the use of fluoride toothpaste, and discourage habits like drinking from a bottle for too long. By learning these good habits early on, children can keep their teeth healthy for years to come. Familiarizing with the dental environment. Introducing children to the dentist early helps them become comfortable with the experience. This not only reduces fear and anxiety, but also allows dentists to spot any potential issues, like cavities, before they become serious problems. Involvement of other health professionals. Health professionals like health visitors are also important in spreading the word about early dental care. They can share information with parents about the importance of dental checkups and how to maintain good oral hygiene practices. Guideline Sources There are guidelines provided by health organizations that offer valuable resources for both parents and health professionals. These guidelines help ensure that everyone is aware of the importance of early dental care and knows how to take action. Key Recommendations To sum up, here are the key recommendations. Encourage parents to take their child for a dental checkup as soon as their first teeth emerge, usually around six months of age. Work with local health professionals, such as health visitors and baby clinics, to spread information about the importance of early dental care. Utilize guidelines and resources provided by health organizations to enhance awareness and early intervention efforts. By following these recommendations, we can help ensure that children start off on the right foot when it comes to their dental health. Managing pain in preschool children with dental caries, challenges and strategies. Imagine having a toothache before ever visiting the dentist. It can be really uncomfortable. Today, we'll learn about the challenges of managing pain in young children with tooth decay and some strategies dentists use to help them feel better. Challenges faced. Addressing treatment in young patients. Treating very young children with tooth decay can be tricky because they might not understand what's happening or be able to sit still for long periods. Additional issues. Factors like lack of sleep and time constraints can make managing dental treatment even more challenging. 
Strategy Managing Pulpitis, Tooth Inflammation Gentle excavation and dressing. Dentists may carefully remove the decayed part of the tooth and cover it with materials like zinc oxide and eugenol, for example, a material called IRM. This can help ease the pain temporarily. Use of medications. Sometimes dentists might use special pastes that contain antibiotics and steroids, like a paste called Lettermix, under the dressing. This can be helpful, especially if the inside of the tooth is exposed due to the decay. Addressing abscessed teeth and dental emergencies in preschool children. Introduction. Sometimes, teeth can get really sick and cause a lot of pain and swelling. Today, we'll talk about how dentists help kids with these problems and what to do if it's a dental emergency. Addressing abscessed teeth. Careful treatment. Dentists may gently remove the infected part of the tooth to access the pulp chamber, which is the inner part of the tooth. This can help relieve the pressure and pain. Dressing with paste. After cleaning the tooth, dentists may put a special paste with antibiotics on cotton wool inside the tooth. This can help healing and symptoms go down. When to use antibiotics. For severe infections, sometimes, if the infection is really bad and spreading, dentists might give antibiotics that children take by mouth. This can help fight the infection, especially if they're swelling or the child feels sick. Recognize till emergencies. Facial swelling. If a child's face gets really swollen because of a tooth infection, especially if they have a fever or don't feel well, it's important to get help right away. Urgent referral. Dentists might send kids with severe swelling or systemic problems to a special center where they can get immediate care. E recommendations. Recognizing pain. Toothaches are common in kids with cavities, so it's important to tell a dentist if your child is in pain. Temporary relief. Dentists can usually help manage pain and infection temporarily by treating the tooth. Using antibiotics wisely. Antibiotics are only needs of ear infections or when the child is really sick. Urgent referral. If the swelling gets worse or the child feels very sick, it's important to get help right away from a specialized center. Principles of diagnosis and treatment planning for preschool children. Early diagnosis and rapid treatment. Early diagnosis and rapid treatment. Childhood disease. Tooth decay mostly happens when we're kids and it can spread quickly in our baby teeth. That's why it's super important to find it early and fix it. Regular checkups. Kids should see the dentist often, at least two or three times a year. Some kids might need to go even more often, like every three months, especially if they're at high risk for tooth decay. Bite wing x-rays. These special pictures help dentists see between our teeth where cavities can hide. Who might get cavities easily should have their first bite wing x-rays around four years old or as soon as possible and they might need them every year after that. Key recommendations. Catch it early. Tooth decay can spread fast, so it's important to visit the dentist regularly for checkups. Get x-rays. X can help dentists find cavities hiding between our teeth, especially in kids who might get cavities easily. Plan regular visits. Make sure to schedule regular visits to the dentist to keep our teeth healthy and strong. Preventive care as the cornerstone of dental health for children. Preventive measures. Fundamental importance. Preventive measures, like brushing our teeth and eating healthy foods, are the foundation of managing tooth decaying kids. It's like building a shield around our teeth to keep them safe from cavities. Integral to treatment. Prevention isn't just something we do on the side, it's a vital part of treating tooth decay. Repairing damaged teeth is important, but it's even more successful when we also work to prevent new cavities from forming. Analogy of a burning house. Addressing causes. Imagine if a house is on fire. Just put out the fire. We also figure out why it started and work to prevent it from happening again. Similarly, with tooth decay, we need to address the causes, like not brushing our teeth enough, alongside fixing the damage. Structured prevention. Just like we have fire prevention plans for houses, we need a structured approach prevention for every child. This means regular brushing, eating healthy foods, and visiting the dentist regularly. Guidelines and resources. Valuable resources. There are guidelines published by organizations like SIGN, the Department of Health, and SDCP that give us important information about preventing tooth decay.
These resources help dentists and parents know the best ways to keep kids' teeth healthy. Key point. Preventive measures are like the strong foundation of a house, they're essential for successful treatment of tooth decay in children. By focusing on prevention, we can keep our smiles bright and healthy for years to come. Fluorides in preschool children, promoting healthy teeth. 1. Fluoride toothpaste. Start early, parents should begin brushing their child's teeth with fluoride toothpaste as soon as the first tooth appears, usually around 6 months old. Recommended concentration, for children at low risk of cavities, paste with 1000 ppm fluoride is suggested. However, in areas where water lacks optimal fluoride levels, lower concentration toothpaste might not be as effective. High-risk children, the UK Department of Health recommends prescribing toothpaste with higher fluoride concentrations, 1350-1500 ppm preschool children at higher risk of cavities, regardless of age. Supervised brushing, it's important for parents to supervise brushing and use a small amount of toothpaste, a thin smear up to 3 years old, and a small pea-sized amount from 3 years old. Rinsing should be avoided after brushing to maximize fluoride benefits. 2. Fluoride Supplements Consideration Fluoride supplements may be considered for children at high risk of cavities or when dental problems could affect their overall health. Long-term use Their effectiveness depends on regular and long-term use, emphasizing the importance of parental motivation and consistent application. Recent Guidelines Recent guidelines in the UK have shifted away from routine fluoride supplement prescription focusing more on the use of fluoride toothpaste and professionally applied varnishes. Water fluoride levels, it's important to follow dosage guidelines, and supplements should not be prescribed if the fluoride levels in water exceed 0.7 ppm. 3. Fluoride mouth rinses. Age limit, fluoride mouth rinses are not recommended for children under 6 years old due to the risk of swallowing too much fluoride, which can be harmful. Professionally applied fluorides for preschool children, ensuring safe usage. 1. Types of professionally applied fluorides. Gels and foams, not widely used in the UK due to ingestion risks, especially for preschool children. These forms of fluoride may pose a higher risk of accidental ingestion, particularly in young children. Varnishes, highly effective for reducing cavities, especially for early and smooth surface lesions. Varnishes are safer for young children as they adhere well to the teeth and are less likely to be ingested compared to gels and foams. 2. Recommended application. For the fluoride varnish should be applied by dental professionals at least twice a year for all preschool children. This ensures regular protection against cavities. High-risk children, children at high risk of cavities may benefit from more frequent applications, up to three or four times yearly. This extra protection helps minimize the risk of tooth decay. 3. Fluoride Varnish Concentration Typical concentration, most fluoride varnishes contain 5% sodium fluoride, which is equivalent to 22, 600 ppm, parts per million, fluoride. This concentration provides effective protection against cavities. Importance of Precision Precise application of fluoride varnish is crucial to avoid overdosage, especially in young children. Dental professionals must apply the varnish carefully to ensure the correct amount is used and to minimize the risk of adverse effects. Fluoride overdosage can result in toxicity, even with small excess amounts. It's crucial to be aware of the symptoms of fluoride overdose, which can include nausea, vomiting, hypersalivation, excessive saliva production, abdominal pain, diarrhea, if a person exhibits these symptoms after fluoride ingestion, it's important to seek medical attention promptly. Management protocols exist to address fluoride overdosage situations, and medical professionals can provide appropriate treatment to alleviate symptoms and prevent further complications. The fluoride toxicity terms for a 10 kg child. Symptoms of toxicity, a dose of 1 mg of fluoride per kilogram of body weight can lead to symptoms of toxicity. Potentially fatal dose, a dose of 5 mg of fluoride per kilogram of body weight is considered potentially fatal. Safe tolerated dose, STD, the safely tolerated dose, STD, for a 10 kg child would be 10 mg of fluoride. Potentially lethal dose, PLD, the potentially lethal dose, PLD, 
for a 10 kilograms child would be 50 g of fluoride. Certainly lethal dose, CLD The certainly lethal dose, CLD, for a 10 kilograms child ranges from 320 to 640 milligrams of fluoride. Risks associated with fluoride content in toothpaste and fluoride tablets. Toothpaste. Toothpaste containing 1000 ppm fluoride will contain 1 mg of fluoride per gram of paste. For example, in a larger tube weighing 140 g, the total fluoride content would be 140 grams. While this amount is less than the certainly lethal dose, CLD, for a 10 kg child, it exceeds the potentially lethal dose, PLD, indicating a potential risk if ingested. Fluoride tablets. A container with 120 tablets, each containing 1 mg of fluoride, total fluoride content of 120 mg. Similarly to the toothpaste scenario, this amount would be within the certainly lethal dose, CLD, but exceed the potentially lethal dose, PLD, posing a potential risk if ingested. It's essential to keep fluoride-containing products out of reach of children to prevent accidental injection. Proper storage and supervision are crucial to minimize the risk of accidental ingestion and potential toxicity. If ingestion occurs, prompt medical attention should be sought to manage the situation effectively and prevent adverse effects. Management protocol for accidental fluoride overdosage, based on the ingested amount of fluoride per kilogram of body weight. Swallowed fluoride less than 5 mg per kilogram body weight. Give milk to slow the absorption of fluoride. Milk can help bind to the fluoride and reduce its absorption into the body. Swallowed fluoride 5-15 mg slash kg body weight. The stomach contents need to be emptied, especially if no other poisons were ingested simultaneously. Administer Ipecacuana emetic mixture, pediatric BP, Ipecac syrup, at the following doses. 10 milliliters for a to 18-month-old child, 15 milliliters for older children. 30 milliliters for adults. Additionally, milk, Epsom salts, or aluminum hydroxide antacid mixture can be given to slow the absorption of any remaining fluoride. Swallowed fluoride greater than 15 milligrams per kilogram body weight. Urgent admission to a pediatric intensive care unit, PICU, is necessary. The child may require neurological, cardiological, and respiratory support in the PICU due to the severity of the fluoride overdose. Additional preventive measures for preschool children. Chlorhexidine gels. Limited research in very young children, but daily professional applications followed by less frequent applications can significantly control caries. Chlorhexidine reduces streptococcus mutants levels in saliva and plaque, contrib cavity prevention. Fisher sealants. Not commonly used in primary dentition, but valuable on primary molars, particularly second primary molars with existing occlusal caries. Sealants act as protective barriers, preventing food particles and bacteria from accumulating in the deep grooves of molar, reducing the risk of cavities. Toothbrushing. Plaque removal should begin with a soft, small-headed toothbrush and appropriate fluoride toothpaste as soon as the first tooth erupts. Parents play a crucial role in instructing and assisting their children with oral hygiene practices. Some toddlers may resist brushing, but parents should persist, ensuring thorough cleaning at least once daily. Supervision of toothbrushing is important to prevent overingestion of toothpaste and ensure effective cleaning. Dietary advice for preschool children. Dietary recommendations. Reducing sugar frequency. Stress the importance of reducing the frequency of sugar-containing foods and drinks to minimize the risk of cavities. Understanding challenges. Recognize the difficulties parents may face changing their child's diet and be empathetic towards their concerns. High metabolic rate. Understand that young children have high metabolic rates and substantial caloric requirements, but these needs can be met with healthier food choices. Poor eaters. Some children with early childhood caries may be poor eaters who compete for missed calories with sugary drinks. Encourage parents to offer nutrient-rich alternatives. Misinterpretation of thirst. Parents may misinterpret their child's request for drinks, assuming it's due to thirst rather than suppressed appetite. Educate them about distinguishing between genuine thirst and sin habits. Avoiding guilt. Provide counseling without inducing excessive guilt. 
focus on understanding the origin of the condition and practical strategies for improvement, breaking behavior cycles. Nighttime bottle habits. Stopping nighttime bottle habits can vary in difficulty among parents. Provide support and guidance tailored to individual circumstances. Gradual weaning. Recommend gradually diluting the contents of the bottle over a few weeks until it contains only water. This helps transition the child away from sugary drinks. Thirsty children. Assure parents children will drink water if thirsty, and water is non-cariogenic, does not cause cavities. Encourage offering water as the primary beverage option. By providing practical advice and support, dental professionals can empower parents to make positive dietary changes for their preschool children, promoting better oral health outcomes in the long term. Managing Behavior in Preschool Children During Dental Treatment Managing Behavior in the Dental Setting Effective communication and anxiety-alleviating strategies are crucial for successful treatment. Restorative treatment under local analgesia is preferable, but sedation or general anesthesia, GA, may be necessary in specific cases. Parental involvement in decision-making is essential, and obtaining written consent is mandatory. Parental presence. Studies show no significant difference in child behavior with or without parental presence. Very young children, around four years old and younger, may behave more positive with parents present facilitating communication and addressing problems during treatment. The role of the parent as a silent helper is crucial in supporting the child during dental procedures. Sedation. Sedation can alleviate anxiety and improve tolerance, but may not transform an uncooperative child. Inhalation sedation, nitrous oxide, and oxygen is generally suitable for preschool children. Orally administered sedation, while effective, lacks dose titration ability, and polypharmacy is discouraged. Chloral derivatives, e.g., triclofos, and benzodiazepines, e.g., midazolam, are used sedatives. General anesthesia. GA should only be considered in a hospital setting when other strategies fail or are inappropriate. Indicated for extensive caries, severe anxiety, disability, or medical conditions where multiple treatments pose risks. Emphasis on avoiding repeated A. Careful planning essential to minimize risks. Temporization of open cavities. Procedure. Open cavities should be hand excavated to remove decayed tissue and debris. Temporization involves filling the cavity with materials such as zinc oxide and eugenol or packable glass ionomer cement. Advantages. Introduction to procedures. Temporization introduces children to dental care in a non-threatening manner, helping them become familiar with the dental environment and procedures. Reduced oral bacterial load. By sealing off the cavity, temporization helps reduce the oral bacterial load, minimizing the risk of further decay or infection. Reduced dental sensitivity and increased comfort. Temporization can alleviate dental sensitivity and discomfort associated with open cavities, improving the child's quality of life. Low-level fluoride release, certain temporary filling materials, such as glass ionomer cement, release fluoride over time, providing additional protection against decay. Definitive restoration of teeth for preschool children. Considerations. Active nature of caries. Recognize the dynamic nature of dental caries in preschool children and plan restorative care accordingly. Regular monitoring and timely intervention are essential to prevent further decay and maintain oral health. Child-friendly approach, employ the tell-show-do approach, positive reinforcement, and child-friendly terminology to create a comfortable and reassuring environment for the child. This approach helps alleviate anxiety and builds trust between the child and the dental team. Treatment pace, allow the child to familiarize themselves with the dental environment, seed at a pace that suits their comfort level. Patience and understanding are key to successful treatment outcomes. Comprehensive treatment plan. Develop a treatment plan that includes both preventive and restorative components at each visit. This approach addresses immediate dental needs, while also promoting long-term oral health. Rubber dam and local analgesia. Ensure the use of rubber dam isolation and local analgesia to enhance treatment effectiveness and minimize discomfort for the child. These techniques improve patient safety and procedural outcomes. Material selection. Choose restorative materials, e.g., 
glass ionomer cements, composites, stainless steel crowns, based on the risk of further carries and the specific needs of the child. Each material has unique properties and indications, so select the most suitable option for each case. Stainless steel crowns. Consider stainless steel crowns for primary molars, with extensive carries affecting multiple surfaces. Stainless steel crowns provide durable and effective coverage, protecting the tooth from further decay and preserving its function. Extraction of teeth and replacement. Extraction of teeth. Indications for extraction. Extraction becomes necessary for teeth that cannot be restored or are causing acute pain or infection. Local analgesia, inhalation, or oral sedation may suffice for one or two extractions in preschool children. Oral anesthesia, GA, is more practical for multiple extractions. Considerations for extraction. Balancing the need for extractions with long-term cooperation is crucial. Factors such as future dental visits and the child's overall comfort should be taken into account. For preschoolers with extensive care, strategic planning involves extracting first primary molars while preserving and restoring the second primary molars. Key points. Extraction should be planned carefully, taking into account long-term cooperation and future dental needs. Preserving second primary molars after extracting first molars can preventive measure to maintain dental function and alignment. Replacing missing teeth. Options for replacement. Dentures, including full dentures, can be well tolerated by motivated children. Removable acrylic dentures with gum-fitted primary prosthetic teeth and clasps on second molars are effective for restorations. Construction and maintenance. Construction methods for dentures in children are similar to those in adults, but attention to cleaning is crucial to prevent further dental issues. Key points. Dentures are a viable option for motivated children who need to replace missing teeth. Proper clean maintenance of dentures are essential to prevent oral health problems and maintain their effectiveness. In summary, Extractions and replacement of missing teeth in preschool children should be carefully planned and executed to ensure long-term oral health and function. Proper consideration of individual needs and cooperation levels is essential for successful treatment outcomes.